Hi guys, it's Dr. Pete here. I'm a workplace psychologist working with school leaders and their teams to build high performance schools. Places where every student and every staff member can flourish. Today I want to continue the school improvement conversation around building collective teacher efficacy to maximise student outcomes. Collective teacher efficacy has an effect size of 1.57, so therefore it's the single largest predictor of student learning. Collective teacher efficacy, of course, is defined as the collective belief of teachers in their ability to positively impact upon student learning. So how are we gonna do it? We're gonna move from theory to practice, do a quick case study of two teaching teams. Comparable at so many levels, yet ending up with radically different levels of collective teacher efficacy and radically different student outcomes. And I wanna unpack what therefore might be the most critical success factors in building high performance teaching teams. Let's take a look at our teaching teams now. They're, as you can see, they're very same same, very similar on a range of characteristics. You can see they're a similar size, seven members, student population, both middle childhood, uh, low team turnover, uh, similar rates of student and behaviour and attendance data, team meeting schedules are the same, personality profile, similar mixture, and they were all present and engaged in their onboarding and team establishment processes. Yet if we jump forward and look to the end of 12 months, we can see some radically different outcomes. The first outcome that's quite different is their collective teacher efficacy levels, and the data on the screen showing you the splits between the semesters. Team A is doing so much better with collective teacher efficacy, and indeed they're great growing it so much more than team B, which you can see we put in yellow there because it never really hit the 66%, which is kind of like the minimum threshold we want to see for collective teacher efficacy. Let's jump over now and have a look at literacy numeracy outcomes, maths and English. Again, the student group A, they've gone from strength to strength throughout the year, positive gains in maths and English. Student group B, on the other hand, they've gone backwards, you know, they've actually declined in the total number of students achieving C or greater grades throughout the course of the year. What's going on? To do that, we want to have a look underneath that in terms of the activity they've engaged in throughout the year, these teaching teams, and is there any difference in how they actually behaved as the course of the year went on? The answer, of course, is yes, there was, and you can see on the table now some pretty significant differences in whether or not they took up extra team time in the form of huddles, uh, the quality of their meeting process, whether they were proactively using their pulse and scorecard data properly, uh, the, the role of the team leader, range of issues that were different. This leads us to three key findings to consider about team time, activity quality and team leadership. So let's have a look at those three key findings now. Firstly, when it comes to team time, the result here, of course, team A engaged in consistently higher amounts of teaching team activity than team B. The question for you to consider with your teaching team, does your team prioritise the time needed for all of the necessary teaching team activities? The second one was about activity quality. The result here, of course, was that the quality of teaching team activity was much higher in team A than team B. The discussion question here is, is the quality of your teaching team's activity sufficient to maximise the performance of your team? Then the third one was team leadership. The result here, team A's leader actively participated in all team activity whilst the leader of team B did not. And the discussion question here is, do you include your team leader as an active participant in all your teaching team activities? So I want to encourage you to have a team conversation among your teaching colleagues so that you can build high performance teaching teams and in doing so, enable students and staff to flourish and thus be a high performance school. So until next time, bye for now.